As we continue this conversation on submission, I think that it's really important for us to define what submission is not. The concept of submission is something that has been abused both in our culture and in the church. And so we're going to start off today with identifying the things we are not talking about before we jump into the things that we are. I pray it blesses you. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I have a quick word. I know that you have been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus, how he calls them, how he encourages them, how he equips them. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, helping you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I also include a lot of cultural and historical information that makes these familiar passages of scripture really come alive. This is a great study to do with maybe your teen girls or a group of friends from church, and it will really help you gain confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. Again, head to shehears.org and you can find the Bible study on the resources page. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today is part two of our conversation on submission. So with submission, this mentality of um, my mentality of being a little bit of a, a, a rebel, I guess, with a good cause, not not without a cause, that's good as long as you don't take it too far. And so the danger, I think, is when we start to fail to recognize God's authority in our lives. And so by definition, submission is recognizing legitimate authority of others in our lives or over us. Um, but there is a way for it to be done in a healthy way. So a healthy definition of submission really comes down to community. Last week we talked about solitude. This week we're going to talk a little bit about community. So when you live in community, you submit to this idea that relationships have a give and take, and then there's this mutual subordination because of the respect and the care and the love that you have for the other person. And I want to remind you that when we talk about any of these things, it's really important that we view everything through the lens of Jesus. So every act of submission in our lives has to come through this lens of Jesus. And I think when we get off track, that's where some of these abuses come in is when we're no longer talking about uh, the way that Jesus views submission, but we're starting to be selfish or prideful in the way that we handle submission. First Peter 2.17, um, Peter addresses this when he says, honor all men. And um, that word men, it's, it's for women too. It's humankind, basically. And then Paul talks about it in Ephesians 5. He says, verse 21, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. And so um, it's all over the New Testament, especially. But, but I say that right off the bat because I don't want you to think that this is just a construct that people have devised in the church to create sheeple. That's, that's not what we're talking about. Submission is actually a pretty broad concept that we see found in scripture, but it's, it would be ignorant to say that it didn't raise deep and difficult issues. And I'm aware of that. Believe me, I am well aware of that. Um, last year we spent some time 
quite a bit of time talking about narcissism in the church and how the devil was a narcissist and um, some of the abuses that we've seen come out of the global church or at least the American church in the last couple of years. And I think that that root issue, that narcissistic tendency for control, which then leads to abuse, comes from this place of not being submissive to God's authority. And I don't necessarily think people start off that way. I think um, everybody starts off with good intentions, but um, the enemy comes in pretty quickly and and destroys God's version of things to uh, just tear people apart and uh, cause division. So there's a couple of distortions I want to start with before we um, get into the healthier versions, because I want to make clear the difference between healthy submission and unhealthy submission. I think especially in the church, there has been um, just this reality of abuse. And when we're talking about submission, there's submission to the, there's different kinds of submission. There's submission to God, the government, the church, uh, our households and more. Um, and, but each of those individual things evokes this powerful response and there is a danger of abuse there. And so I want to just give a little light to some of, some of these things and some of these distortions so that we can then take a look at what God's version is. So the first distortion I wanted to mention is the doormat. And um, I don't think I have to explain this one too much. Most people know what a doormat personality type is. But these are really just the people that allow others to misuse and abuse them. Or they stay silent when they misuse and abuse other people. And what ends up happening is these, these people are treated like a thing rather than a person. So they are a housekeeper instead of a wife or an ATM instead of a husband or an accessory instead of a child. And they become defined by what can be produced or gained instead of who they are. And so, um, this one I think is really prevalent in a lot of, Um, Not even just church environments that are unhealthy, but even marriage relationships that are unhealthy, especially um, in the last, I want to say, 10 years or so. I think I've seen more and more women talk about, um, you know, resisting this this type of mentality. But but that's something that uh, the submissive comment or that submissive mentality can really lend itself to as a distortion of, of, of God's truth. The second one is the pleaser. The pleaser wants to avoid conflict and honestly, they will go to really great lengths to avoid a fight. Um, These are the people that can't make a decision about dinner. So like when you have two pleasers together, uh, where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. No, they can't make a decision to save their lives. I mean, it's, it's, um, kind of frustrating, I think, if you're not a pleaser to <laughs> to even witness those kinds of conversations. Um, and you can lose yourself in those kinds of relationships. If you are a pleaser and you are trying to just be submissive to avoid a fight, you can really lose yourself in those relationships. The third one is dependent. This is when you have a fear of making decisions. So this is someone that Instead of maturing in the process of making decisions and learning how to figure it out and being responsible for maybe bad decisions or experiencing the thrill of a good decision, um, they submit out of fear instead of making those decisions. So if submission is out of fear, um, sometimes there's different reasons. Sometimes it's the fear of making the wrong decision or sometimes it's the fear of not wanting to offend somebody or sometimes it's the fear of not wanting the blame if something goes wrong. But the problem with that is they never accomplish anything of lasting value and they're always deferring to somebody else. And that submissive dependency really kind of drowns out God's gifting and calling for that person's life. And the last one is the manipulator. Um, So this is somebody that might follow the outward rules, but then kind of manipulates behind the scenes to still get their own way. So um, an example of this would be maybe somebody that has an act of mercy towards somebody so that they create debt and dependency on them. Or they might give a word of kindness to win somebody to their side and they might like agree with their decisions, but then they start sowing doubt. Um, So it's a real manipulative 
type of submission that really isn't submission at all. And so these are all distortions of what God's version of submission is. We unfortunately see these in the church a lot. Um, not just local church, but the global church, I think. Um, in other countries, we see this as well. And these can be really so ingrained that people don't even realize that they're doing it, but they are destructive. And I think instead what we see is this call to submission, the kind of submission we see in Jesus that is radically different than this world's version. Father God, as we start to wrap our minds around all of the things that submission is not, Lord, I pray that you would help reveal to our hearts the areas in our life that either we were guilty of requiring an unhealthy version of submission or we participated in an unhealthy version of submission. And Lord God, I pray that you would open our eyes to what the truth of biblical submission is. And as we continue to explore this topic, Lord God, I pray that you would help us to see through the mess that it can sometimes be, the cloudiness, the murkiness, and that you would reveal your truth, God, because we know that it's the truth, the knowledge of the truth that sets us free. So Lord, I pray for my friends as they continue with this conversation this week, that you would start to reveal yourself and your truth to them in a powerful way. Lord God, I thank you for your presence and your peace in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, before you go, I just wanted to fill you in on something. I've gotten a lot of questions recently about what's next. People have gone through the She Hears Bible study and they kind of want to have some direction as far as what to do next. Don't worry, I will be writing more studies. But in the meantime, the goal of the She Hears Bible study was to not only help you to learn how to hear Jesus through the example of the six women, in the study, but really for you to have a a set of tools to use that you can apply to other passages of scripture. So what I have available for you on the resources page of my website is a couple different tools to help you do just that. And depending on your budget, there's lots of options. The first option is just a very simple uh, ESV version book of John Bible journal. And so what that is, is on one side, you have the scripture from the the whole book of John. So on one side, you have the actual scripture verse by verse. And on the other side, you have places to take notes. And so that's a really easy place to continue doing the color method of study. And if you don't have the colors that we have designated in the study, those are available. I think they're just a couple bucks in the, in the resources page as well. But you can continue to use that color method throughout, you know, one chapter or a, a couple verses. It's a really easy way to do that. And they're small. You can kind of tuck it into your bag. The second resource is similar, except it's all four gospels like that. And so that, that one is done by Hosanna Revival and they're just beautiful. Um, I love them, just the aesthetic of them. They make me feel really special when I'm working in them. And so that's all four of the Gospels. And that's a little bit more expensive because you're getting the whole set. And then the third option, and there's two different price points depending on what you're looking for, is we have journaling Bibles. And so there's the hardcover that are beautifully painted and then also the leather bound. And what I love about those is when you open them up inside, you will see space in the margins to continue to write. Some people just have a thing about writing in their Bibles. Not me. My Bibles are all marked up. But if you have a thing about writing in your Bibles, this could be a dedicated journaling Bible where you can do the color method and not worry about getting you know, your study Bible all messed up. And so I pray that those resources bless you. I started putting those in the shop after people started requesting them. And then I realized that I never really told you guys about them unless you private message me. So in case you're looking for what's next, what's more, this is a really good transition after you finish the She Hears Bible study. I pray that it blesses you. Have a good week, friends. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.